seconds into flight, we are feeling the rumble. We are seeing 33 out of 33 Raptor engines ignited on the Super Heavy booster. We are coming to the center of the Continuing to get good call out. The trajectory looking nominal, system looking nominal. Just amazing to see all 33 roll up once again. Going through the period of maximum aerodynamic pressure. At this point, we've already passed through the max cube, that maximum dynamic pressure. Tells us Starship is through the period of maximum pressure. Passing supersonic, so we're now moving faster than the speed of sound. Decreasing. Getting those onboard views from the ship cameras. To get ready, the booster will shut down all but three of the Raptor engines. Now the, the next major milestone is going to be a hot stage maneuver. We're going to be doing that in just about 90 seconds to do that. We're going to shut down all the three center Raptor engines on Super Heavy. That'll be our Miko, our most engines cut off. And the plant's holding the two stages together are going to release the Starship second stage and hold first its engines, the RVACs first, the sea levels right after that. The sea level engines will be splayed or just kind of pointed out at about a 15 degree angle. So if you look close and you get good tracking, you might be able to see those center right after. If all goes well, those six engines will burn for almost six and a half minutes. So those push Starship off of the booster. Engine power continues to look on the on stage. Stage. Raptor engines. as we prepare right. for stage yeah, separation yeah, down the first down. engine performs right stage around the first stage mark one and we'll listen. We'll begin a boost back maneuver for landing and the golf. We'll see the booster engines start to shut down. You'll see all but three lights go out in the middle. And then we'll see the engines ignite on the ship, pushing it away. And that will start carrying the ship into space. Booster will start to do its trip, and then we'll be boost back burn, setting it up for eventual splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico. Beginning the flip for stage separation. Hot staging. Boosters now making its way back, seeing six engines ignited on ship. Okay, we got a Starship on its way to space and a booster on the way back to the Gulf. and it's doing great Right now, the ship, the second stage, wow, these is, are just uh, incredible on its way. views. Coming uh, like we to said, us. you can see all six of its engines are ignited. Everything is looking good for both the first the stage on the left hand side of your screen ship, or the super heavy uh, will booster, be the shutdown as well as on the right hand side of your screen Seagull, that is Starship or we also off, refer to that as the ship. Which if you follow our Falcon 9 launches, familiar terminology there. Now the boost back burn so far, uh, was the first of two has burns been required to return it to even Earth. With the rud the next the one will be the booster. landing burn where all amazing. 13 center engines will initially ignite and then transition the into a three engine burn. Staging to uh, get to ship help on its way slow to orbit. it down. It did that. Now, just as a reminder way. of the stage one yeah, test objective, uh, we're looking for right, controlled ascent, there, that which we have so far. Uh, stage separation, out. which once again starts gorgeous. Stage, we cruised right through it, those uh, as well as, as, and as you just heard. Everything's looking good. The news there telling now, us that the, ship, the path we, that Starship uh, is on uh, staging, is good. Which, now, Starship's second there, stage is still firing its screen, engines, it and as you heard, uh, following planned to, flight path, uh, uh, the ship objectives, we're looking that, for hot staging again, cruised right through that. that uh, we're looking to demonstrate controlled ascent, as well as orbital insertion. And eventually, we'll be able to 
Now the bottom right hand corner of your screen shows the ship uh, engine graphics, so be sure to keep an eye on those. And if it makes it this far, yeah, Kate, like this is just a, a phenomenal Ocean, test so far. Um, a Super Heavy is performing beautifully today. It's on its return leg of the journey. Now, if we get that far, ship like, continuing all of that to burn great. its Secondary six engines, those larger ship. circles, Again, the Raptor vacuum engine, the inner circle, the uh, about its Raptor sea level engine. Um, chamber pressures. We're great news there. That tells us that the chamber about pressures about 30 seconds away. Uh, just under 30 seconds away. From the start of the boost back burn. Uh, excuse me, the landing burn on the booster. Yeah, the you can see the grid fins are rotating. You can see those hypersonic grid fins are guiding us through the atmosphere back to towards the splashdown site. Again, we're going for a hard ship uh, for a splashdown. The three a soft splashdowns in the triangle. The larger ones are Raptor vacuum engines. So for landing burn, we're going to expect to see the 13 center engines light so at the pressures rapidly bring down the booster's velocity, uh, and then uh, just the three uh, in the center. We're not targeting to splash down. Targeting orbit. Let's see if that'll That's work. Very intentional for the mission design. The goal is to get to a thrust profile. We're getting a few, a few engines. But also to get to the energy levels that the ship would need to dissipate. And acquisition of signals. So we'll see if we can get some other video of that. Now, uh, this is a test objective today. It is still something that we're attempting to learn. Energy um, And to make it that far to demonstrate the controlled reentry up to that point is pretty darn good. Ship and continuing to look nominal with its here. ascent burn. Seeing nominal pressures means that we have a this really burn good shot lasting uh, about orbit. six yeah. minutes total. Now, if the booster had survived, uh, we and would be expecting uh, that around this the time burn where it would be end, uh, getting ready to land, performing uh, its Just uh, after T plus eight minutes, about a minute did from not now. Survive. So far, though, I mean, uh, that being congrats said, to that's the team. Okay. Making it this far is farther than, we, than we've gone after, on flight uh, two. Staging, Just so wonderful views and, and great engine performance the from the vehicles. And, and probably improve the hardware itself uh, for the next flight. So far, we've hit controlled ascent. We're in the middle of that right now. We demonstrated the hot staging. Kate, as you said, cruised through that. Uh, we demonstrated controlled entry of the, the booster. Just yeah. dropped a little short of the engine relay, but hey, that's something we can learn for the next one. Yeah, now that view that we just had moments ago was a live shot of Star Command. There you see it again. This is uh, our mission control center at Starbase. Uh, where vehicle operators are standing by. Now, the next milestone coming up uh, is in less than a minute. Uh, at that point, ship will, or I'm sorry, it actually, it already has. Um, ship engine cut off. There we go. <laughs> Raptor engines have successfully shut down. We heard a call out for nominal orbital insertion, which is incredible. Look at these views, Dan. Uh, I'm just completely blown away right now. Uh, what a day. Congratulations to the entire SpaceX team. I mean, this, this flight pretty much just started, but... <laughs> We're farther than we've ever been before. We've got a starship, not just in space, but on its coast phase into space. Just to recap where we've come, and it's only been nine and a half minutes. Trail behind it. Um, there's some of those great views from, uh, from Starlink, giving us uh, views of starships onboard videos. And so we're hoping that the Starlink on board will let us, just like we're seeing these videos now, see through that plasma field by maintaining a continuous communication lock with the satellites on orbit through the wake that Starship leaves behind. Now, this is only the second time that we're testing Starlink during re-entry. So even though we do have these great visuals now, uh, don't be surprised if we manage to get some signal hiccups through. We're still learning about what that wake will actually look like in practice and whether we're able to get that live continuous high-speed data during re-entry. Yeah, that's right. And one of the really primary reasons we want to use Starlink is to just gather as much data as possible. It's been said 
the data is the payload on one of these flights uh, where we're just we're putting this flight hardware in a real flight environment trying to learn about it as much as possible uh, re-entry is going to be a really critical phase of flight uh, we really want to know how the ship's going to perform especially that heat shield as we're going through the hypersonic re-entry. So if something were to go wrong during this re-entry, we want as many paths as possible to collect that information, that data, just to, again, just continually feed back uh, into start the Starship program to make each flight more reliable, more successful. Acquisition single, Mauritius. Now, if Starship manages to make it all the way through re-entry, we'll collect valuable data on Starship flying through the Earth's atmosphere at hypersonic speeds, meaning uh, more than five, or at this point, will be more than five times the speed of sound. Now, we're watching these live views, uh, HD views by the looks of it, thanks to Starlink. Uh, you can see that the flaps there on the ship might be actuating. Um, Certainly some incredible uh, visions of planet Earth behind Starship. Now, uh, we've already validated Starship's ability to fly uh, and land at subsonic speeds. You might recall those suborbital flights from a few years ago, and we can see those flaps there. So getting data on aspects like heating and control while traveling way faster than we did before is going to be critical to eventually bringing Starships back from space for rapid reuse. So I mentioned those flaps. That's one of the things um, that, that enables Starship to help control itself and, and, and survive the heat of reentry, which like we said before, we're expecting that reentry to occur around T plus 49 minutes. Uh, so we're uh, pr getting pretty close here. And what you're seeing here, it looks like the vehicle is sort of moving back and forth. Part of what you're also seeing is one of the cameras, this onboard view that we have, is on the end of a flap. Starship has front flaps and, and rear flaps in the vehicle. Um, so we've got four of those. And, oh man, we can see the heating on those flaps as we're starting to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere. This is where the Earth's atmosphere is doing the work to slow us down. Uh, now, like we said, this plasma field wow. is, wow, what a view. We hope to maintain these views throughout. Starship is so big that we're hoping that the plasma field doesn't entirely blanket the entire vehicle. Right now, it is not. The Starlinks are still... Views brought to you by Starlink. <laughs> yeah, the Starlinks are still <laughs> communicating and still uh, capturing the data and the video that we see here. I mean, Shiva, this is just absolutely incredible views. We've never seen anything like this before. This is the, the biggest flying object ever in space. <laughs> absolutely, Kate. And, and it's important to note, with the ascent burn that we did was to get us to orbital velocities, even though we were on a nearly orbital trajectory. So the heating and the loads that Starship is going through right now are what it would be getting if it were recovering from an orbital mission. And, and just the fact that we have views through entry, this is incredible. Yeah, again, this is the furthest and fastest that Starship has ever flown. And you can definitely tell by the, uh, the crowd here in Hawthorne. The heat shield tiles doing their work. We talked about it earlier. Uh, up to 2,600 degrees Fahrenheit that those heat shield tiles are dissipating as we are re-entering. Yeah, now this was one of the critical, or, or rather the key uh, mission objectives that we were hoping to hit today. Uh, we have never, like I said before, this is the fastest and furthest that Starship has ever flown. So this is the first time that we're getting to collect this re-entry data and understand how these 18,000 hexagonal heat shield tiles are working together to protect the belly of Starship as it re-enters the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, once again, the, the atmosphere is doing us a big favor here by... The atmosphere is actually doing us a huge favor here by acting as a braking system for Starship um, as it re-enters the atmosphere. And that's part of the reason why the flaps are so important. We're using the body of Starship and the drag from the atmosphere to slow us down from orbital speed 